Hey, I'm so excited today. I wanted to do something new. We've been making posts every month this whole year. Even last year, we shared verse mapping and we have had tremendous feedback. It has been one of our most popular posts that we do every week. And so I thought I would just do a little treat and show you guys some verse mapping. So just to show you what it looks like, um, you've seen pictures of my Bible online and I promise we'll try not to make it as messy today, but I just wanted to walk with you through a verse out of Psalms and it is one for the brokenhearted. So especially if you have just been going through some storms, if you've been just experiencing trials, this will be a really great verse for you about what God says about those who are brokenhearted. So let's get started. So the verse that we're going to map out is Psalm 147 and verse three. So in my version, I have the NASB, the 1977 edition, and it reads like this. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. So I'm going to copy that down and I'm going to leave some space in between so that we have room to take notes. So I'm just copying that down. He heals the brokenhearted. And then I'll just skip some space and finish the verse down here. Binds up their wounds. Okay, so let's begin with he. Who is he? He is God. So he's the one doing the healing. He's the one doing the binding. So it's so important that we that we know that because we are not the one that heals ourselves. We're not the one that binds up ourselves. He's the one doing the healing. He's the one doing the binding. Okay. The second thing to notice is the word heals. So heals has an S here. It's plural. So it is important because it's not saying that God healed only in the past. He is healing currently. He heals now. So this is implying present, not just the past. So it's an ongoing thing that he does. And in just looking up what that word heals means or to heal, if you just did, you know, like a generic search on your phone or on your laptop, just looking at, or in just an old fashioned dictionary, looking up what that word heal means, you would find that it means to become healthy or sound to alleviate distress or anguish, to restore health. So all three of those, so important to know that's what this word heals means, okay? And we'll talk about it at the end, once we get all of our notes and we start looking at each piece, it's so important to know how each word breaks down it really helps with studying, I think, in my opinion. So the next phrase to look at is this word brokenhearted. Now notice that this is a compound word. So if you've it's been a while since you've been in school, what is a compound word? Well, it's two words combined to make one big word, right? So broken is a word by itself. Hearted, heart is a word. So together, brokenhearted. So the Bible that I have is the Keyword Study Bible. And it's really neat because it gives the original Hebrew and Greek in the back of my Bible. And so it's notated with Strong's reference. So for example, in my Bible, broken hearted has two of Strong's references, 7665 and 3820. So if I go to the back of my Bible, I can go to the Old Testament and look up each of these Strong's references and it shows what one of them applies to broken, one of them applies to the heart. Um, you can also find that if you get online, there's a really neat website and app called the Blue Letter Bible app, and they also have the Strong's reference. So you can probably find it in other Bible apps as well. Um, but it's really good because it gives you that original meaning of the word. So if you do that, what you find is for broken, this word broken is going to imply burst, to burst, um, to break, 
broken down to smash or to shatter. Okay. And then this word hearted, if you look up the Strong's reference for this word hearted, it's going to base it off of that word heart, which it says applies to feelings, um, the will, the intellect, the inner man, or it might say um, center, like the center of your will uh, or the seat of your emotions. So those are all things applying to this word heart. Okay. And so what's important to know is let's go back again. God is healing. So God is making healthy. God is alleviating distress or anguish. He's restoring health to who? The brokenhearted. This right here is the group of people God is healing. Okay, this is who he is tending to and who he cares about. So the psalmist is drawing our attention to that fact that God cares about a group of people who are described as brokenhearted. What does that mean? It means that their feelings, their will, their intellect, the, the inner man, the seed of their emotions has been broken down. It's been smashed. It's been shattered. It's been burst open. It's, it means to break. Does that describe you? Do you feel that way? Have you ever felt brokenhearted? And isn't it encouraging to know what God, how he tends to that group of people, how he cares about us when we're in that state and what he does. These are the actions, the things that he does for us, right? How cool. So encouraging. So if we keep going, the second part of this verse kind of reiterates the first part. So let's keep going. It says, and he binds up their wounds. So if you think of that phrase binds up, it has a little bit of the, I don't know, maybe a comparison to Psalm 139. You know, in that, in that verse in Psalm 139, it says that um, God kind of hems us in. So that might be something to notate for that. You know, go back and read that verse and learn how he hems us in. If you look up this phrase, binds up, uh, using Strong's reference, if you go and, and look that up, it's uh, 2280 is Strong's reference number for that. And that is implying to wrap up firmly, such as like one object with another. to stop or to rule or govern, okay? So that all has to do with that phrase binds up. So wrap up firmly one object with another, okay? To stop something, to rule or govern. And what is he talking about? He's talking about the wounds, the wounds. Now in some translations, you might see the word sorrows. So like I said, mine is the NAS, NASB. It's the 1977 version. And it uses the phrase wounds. But maybe you have a different version. And so the word you find here is sorrows. And so what does that mean? What does this wounds, what is that word um, implying? It's talking about grief that comes with being brokenhearted. It's talking about grief that causes the spirit 
to be broken. Okay. And, you know, you might be thinking, well, I wonder if this is like a, like a physical wound. Well, in this situation, that's not really the implication. Uh, you know, yes, God can, can heal your broken arm. He can heal uh, a wound that you incurred because you fell while you were hiking. Yes. But with this particular verse, it's really pertaining more to the emotional suffering. Have you ever experienced emotional suffering? So it's, it's not really physical pain or injury that he's talking about here. And notice again, just like this says heals, you know, it's a plural word. This also wounds is plural. It has an S on the end. So that's important because it's more than one. You know, we have many sorrows in our life. We have many griefs that come with being brokenhearted. And every single one of them, God is binding up. He is wrapping up firmly one object with another, wrapping his arms around us, stopping those sorrows, ruling over them and governing them, right? And think about, too, you know, with the Psalms, David wrote so many of them and I think about him specifically, you know, talking about how God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds and how, you know, it's, it's emotional suffering that went on. I think about his life in general and how much emotional suffering did he endure? You know, he, with his sin with Bathsheba and the baby that resulted from that, that baby died, you know, if, if you read in scripture, um, you know, whenever David was being pursued by Saul. Uh, David had a lot of wounds. He had a lot of sorrows um, in his life. And so it really is interesting when you go back and study, just knowing where, where this came from in his heart when he was writing it, then it really sinks in how it was pertaining to emotional suffering and not, not just physical, you know, physical pain or injury. So the other thing that I think about too is how these two lines of this verse are connected. So God God heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds and so as he's doing that, as he is binding up and healing, you you almost get this idea of curing that he is he he is giving the cure. He he is the cure, right? So I think that's really neat. So that might just be a, another side note here is there's a, a curing process that is going on. And it's because of God. God is the cure. God's the one providing that. So I just wanted to walk through this with you. I hope it was helpful just for you to know. It, as you break things down like this and study, it, it means a lot. You know, we can go through and read God heals, you know, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. But when you go back and you really take the time to break things down, it kind of sinks in a lot more. And especially when you go back and just summarize it, what God does to this special group of people and what they have endured. Why is their heart broken? Why has it been smashed or shattered? What does that look like? What are they experiencing? And what does God do for them? He binds up their, their wounds. He binds up their sorrows. It's just comforting. And so I hope this was helpful to you. This was just a little snippet of basically what we go through when we study scripture and we come up with the graphics that you see on our social media. This is the process that we go through. So looking up the original language, going to end, just defining what words mean and just being able to look at a bigger picture and studying God's word as it is in the Bible. Let us know if you'd like to see more of verse mapping.